two words today, and they're more of like facts rather than vocabulary because I found this very interesting when I was looking up this Maker Monday craft. So the first teddy bear was created in 1902. 1902, that's crazy. And it was created by Stipe. And the largest teddy bear in the world is 55 feet and four inches long. 55 feet. So like I am, I was about to say six feet. I'm five foot six. So you would have to have like 10 of me. That's huge. That's like, it's so big. It's so much fun. Ours is not going to be that large today. But that could be a really cool goal to have. Maybe you can work together like your whole fifth grade class to create the world's like even larger teddy bear. That'd be so much fun. All right, so Stipe was a German company that was the first business to make stuffed animals and they started in 1880. So the teddy bear wasn't the first stuffed animal, but one of the first, 1902. I think that's awesome. I love history and learning about history. So today we're making our own stuffed animal. I didn't even make a bear, but I just thought bears are really fun. When you think of stuffed animal, you think of a teddy bear. The supplies that you'll need are scissors. I have little scissors for cutting out my pattern, but then I have fabric scissors, which are slightly bigger to cut my fabric. Um, well, actually, I did a pattern. So I'm going to do a part of cutting mine. I was cheating. Uh, I'm going to make an elephant because they're my favorite animal, and I thought that that might be fun, but I'm thinking it might be a little hard with that little tail and trunk. We're going to find out. Um, polyfill is what you use to stop but you don't even have to use this. You can use newspaper, you can use your scraps as you've been cutting. If you have any of our craft kits, I'm sure you have a bunch of feathers and fabric and all kinds of stuff lying around. So feel free to kind of use whatever. Um, you'd have to do a better job sewing than I did, but another really fun idea is you could put rice in it. And if you put the rice in the microwave for like a minute, it becomes like a heating pad. So you have like a stuffed animal that's all nice and warm. Um, I need a bat. This is my first experiment. So like I said, I did not, so I ran out of thread, so I got lazy. But here is my bat. It's so cute. So here's my bat, here's this. Um, the other things you will need, fabric to um, put your pattern on and cut out. I'm using gray because I'm doing an elephant, but you can do whatever color you have lying around. And it doesn't have to be felt. That is just what I had. You need some kind of marker to trace your pattern onto your fabric or to draw your own pattern onto your fabric. You will need thread and then you're, you're going to need a needle and these are left over from Miss Jetsies and my Halloween craft kits. So these are big old needles but that's okay that totally works depending on the fabric that you have. So that is my needle. I'm going to put it back in here so I don't lose it. All right. Yes, stuffing or cotton balls. Cotton balls is another good thing that you can stuff inside your stuffed animal. I love it. I didn't think about that. I like okay. an old t-shirt. Oh yeah, old t-shirt. Anything like that that's soft. So the first thing I'm going to do, I printed off an elephant. If you are good at drawing like Miss Josie, <laughs> you can draw your own freehand. Uh, if this is your first time sewing, maybe you're just going to draw a circle. And that circle can be an emoji, and you can draw a little face on it. So we're just learning basic sewing skills today, which is awesome. Anytime you're using scissors or a needle, be sure you talk to an adult first, because those are hooky things, and I've poked myself with a needle many, many times, because I refuse to use little thumb. What's that? The thumb? I know what you mean, though. It's not the thumb tack. The no. thimble. Yeah. The thimble. I have a thimble. Sibling. 
If I make it, can I give it to my dog? You could. It would be a great dog toy. Oh my gosh, Lola would just love it. <laughs> That's a really fun idea, Miss Josie. Oh, you could even um, make it smell good. I don't know. Like lavender. Lavender. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, put dog treats inside of it, oh. and then your dog's just going to, like, yeah. rip all into it. That would be funny. Okay, so I've got my elephant, and I'm going to put him on my belt. Obviously, you can tell I was using this for black, and when I packed my box, I slept it in, but that's okay. It works. So I am just doing a very simple stitch today. If you want more detailed sewing, you can go back to October, because Miss Joti and I made some pretty cool sugar skulls, and we used our sewing skills for that. We used our sewing skills a couple of times in that series. So you're more than welcome. Those videos are on Facebook and on our website. There are links to them right now. Skip the hammering one. Whatever, I like the hammering <laughs> one. <laughs> that was, we had fun that day. But yeah. Actually, that one is the only project that is actually hanging on my desk area. I love it so much. I have Gustav. The Shy Ghost. Yes. No, Gustavo. Gustavo the Shy Ghost hanging in my desk area in my trunk room. Okay, so there is one elephant. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. And I'm going to cut them both out. Well, and you and Miss Linda made the Oogie Boogie Man. And y'all did it two different ways. One was sewing and one wasn't, correct? Yes. One was the mommy and the one was the baby Oogie Boogie. <laughs> I love it. I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch that one. Something else I just thought of that was really fun that I used to do growing up. Um, I would fill uh, little sachets, so little shapes like this, with potpourri and other good smelling stuff. So you already mentioned lavender, but you can fill them and like put them in your sock drawer. Yeah. And then your socks smell awesome and not like stinky shoes or stinky feet. Or like if you have anxiety, probably like do a peppermint and some other. I did peppermint and lemon yeah. last night, for sure. Okay, so here's my stinky elephant. I'm going to use my um, scissors to cut out both of them. I would be very interested to see what animals everyone chooses. There's so many, or maybe it's a character. Maybe you really like Avatar or there's lots of creatures in Harry Potter. Could be those. Or you can make one that looks like you. That'd be fun. You could Or like something Thanksgiving like turkey. Great idea. That's really fun if you have like any little kids in your family because then you can talk about counting and sorting, just actually picking things up and putting them down inside a pie tray, a pie tray. That would be a fun project. And there's lots of things online that you can purchase that are just like that. Or it could just inspire them to make pie. I made a pie last night. That's why I was thinking <laughs> about a pie. You get to go home and eat more pie. So, yes. I saw it. It looked yummy. Thank you. It was good. It was good. You picked fruit. You can make an apple for your teacher. I was like, she has so much energy on Sunday to make 
scratch uh, from scratch pie crust. So it's my goal. My goal is to be good at pie crusts. Okay, so one element down. It's on Facebook Live at 4.30 p.m. Awesome. So Facebook Live, 4.30 p.m. tomorrow. Diwali. Is that just the name or is it, does it have a more fun name than what I'm saying? No, it is Diwali. We are celebrating Diwali. And the actual Diwali happens to be on November 14th. So, oh, cool. which is pretty fun. And guess what we'll be making tomorrow? We'll be making chai tea. I'll share a chai tea recipe. Oh, you guys should really tune back at the same time. Is what's happening right now. But tomorrow on Facebook Live, Diwali, and I know that Miss Joti has created this gorgeous painting. So you guys are really going to want to uh, tune in. I know mean, she's got some jewelry and she has some clothes that she's going to be showing off. It's going to be so cool. Yeah. I'm going to be sitting at my desk, sipping my own tea. Yeah, it will be very tea. festive. It will be festive. That's a fun one. I'm excited. And that one's for all ages. Yes, it's all this ages. One. I'll share some tea with you. Because I already drank the tea that she gave me. <laughs> but it's so good. Do you have any more of those kits? We do have three kits left at Maine. Yes, only three. They're so good, you guys. So it smells so good. As soon as I made it to there's like clove and cinnamon yes. and black tea. It's Delicious. We have three yes. kids left at Maine. Yes. And the kids total, uh, in the kids, we have five different activity um, bags. So it's a total of five activities, oh. and tea is one of them. Oh, that's right. I remember you making that. So five activities and one kit. Yes. We have three kids left at the main library. That's the one on Conover Drive. So you yes. should totally pick one up and come say hi. Okay, so I've got both of my elephants. What I am going to do is put them together so they are the same. And then I will show you how to thread a needle. But then I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna sew around the outside. This tail's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna sew around the outside, but I'm maybe gonna leave his belly <laughs> as an opening because you don't wanna sew all the way around because you have to still stuff uh, something inside. So I think I'm gonna leave the belly open because that might be the easiest. Maybe the, actually maybe his back. I'll leave his back open and then I'm gonna stuff some of our polyfill. But remember, you can use whatever you want. Um, okay, so. Come on, just one. I only need one. I have embroidery thread. You could also use sewing thread. Pulled the wrong thread. Story of my life. <laughs> Um, here we go. I'm gonna cut off a little bit. So my needle is massive. Where'd it go? So this is called the eye of your needle. That little hole, well, mine's not so little, but the hole at the top of your needle is the eye of the needle. So some needles are gonna be itty, 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 itty small. So you might not even be able to fit. There's usually six threads in one embroidery um, thread, if you will, strand. My needles at home can't fit all six. I usually sew with about two of them. But for today, I'm going to sew with all six. Sometimes I wet it and I feed it through. Oh my gosh. If Miss Walker or anyone else, we have so many quilting amazing women here. They're watching this right now, but they're giggling at me. Okay, so I threaded my needle. We're gonna take it all the way down. Make sure you're in the exact same position. We're gonna take it all the way down to where my two ends meet. We're going to tie them in a knot. I'm going to take it and pull it. 
So I realized I did that really fast and didn't explain anything. So I'm gonna do it again. So I take it around my finger and I'm making a loop around my finger. Then I'm rolling that tail to where it's inside the loop and then I'm pulling it through to make my knot. That's how my mom taught me a long time ago. There might be easier, better ways, but hey, work for her, it works for me. Now I've got two good knots on the end. So there are ways to do this and then you're gonna flip it out and make it all nice and pretty. I am going to do very basic sewing. So we're not gonna worry about any of that today. For my friends who know, think about how you need to do that and make your stuffed animal that way. For my friends who, this might be your first time picking up a needle, we're just gonna show for it. So I'm going to start on his ear. And poking through, being very careful not to poke myself, poking through both pieces of fabric, pulling through, then there's my end knot. Then I'm going to keep going on the same side of my fabric, like so. So I'm always going through the top of my fabric. This is how we did our sugar skulls, if you watched that one. There we go. I'm gonna take it through the top, through both, and pull it down. Loop over the top, through both, and pull it down. I think this makes for a fun textured look. Pull it down. I'm gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna show you when you get to the end of your thread, how you will cut and tie a knot. Looks so pretty. Thank you. And yeah. I think if they are using fabric, it probably will be easier to poke through, right? Yes, felt is thick. So yeah. felt is a little thicker. This needle, it's not dull enough to where I won't hurt myself, but it's also not the sharpest needle in the haystack. Yeah. Okay, over here. And I'm going to turn him around. Go on top. I like listening to audiobooks when I sew because, as you can tell, sewing can be a time consuming process. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and then we're gonna tie it in or not. Okay. I'll see if I'm doing dishes by hand. Like that's when I listen to audiobooks. Yes, chores is yes. a, a go-to. Okay, so the way I'm going to knot this, because I think this is just a useful thing to know, not necessarily the prettiest. I'm going to take my really long needle and I'm going to put it behind my last stitch and I'm going to put it under my last stitch and I'm going to pull my thread through and I'm going to come back and do that again. I should have left myself a little bit more room. I'm going to pull it through. We are knotted. We are good to go. I'm going to cut it off. I will thread one more time. I probably won't finish, but I'll show you guys the, the process one more time. Show it a slightly different way. Only changing one thing. Okay, so I threaded through the eye of my needle. This time I'm only going to bring it down about a quarter of the way. And then I'm going to knot the bottom. I, I suggest sticking to one way or the other because what I'm doing, this thread is going to be thicker than what I'm sewing with now, but I wanted to show you another option if you so desire and want to know. There we go. So this allows you to have a longer thread that you're working with because the longer your thread, sometimes the more likely it is to get snarled. Um, so if you're a novice and you're just starting, the first one is really good. This way you can have a slightly longer thread and then you can give yourself more space as you sew. So let's see, this is the front. So I'm going to go at the top and pull it 
down, but you'll see the difference. And you can decide whether you want a thick border or a skinny border. See, it's a lot thinner. I actually think the thick looks pretty cool for this project, but if I was going to do um, a lot smaller stitches, like really, really close to one another, then I would probably go with a thinner, thinner option. Just do your own thing, however you want to do it. Or if you didn't have as much thread left and you wanted to just make it right now, right now before you. <laughs> what do I have in my house? How can I make this stretch? <laughs> I think this one is lazy people probably prefer it this way because I do. <laughs> I am big into cross stitching. Okay, so if it starts to snarl, just let your um, thread dangle. That was something that I saw on a how-to video about a year ago, and it really helped my um, sewing as far as getting knotted or twisted. That can happen, especially if you're sewing a lot um, closer to your stitches. I just love how-to videos. Well, I need to name my elephant. How about like Reginald? <laughs> Reginald the elephant. That's a fun name. Thanks. I was just reading a book review and what was the character? There's a lot of Marisols coming out, like main characters. Mm. And I haven't heard that name in so long and it's so pretty. So last night I found the movie The Night Before the Christmas. So finally. Oh yes, yeah, she did. She's yes. talking about. She didn't know the night uh, Nightmare Before Christmas before we did the Oogie Boogie. Did you watch it? No, I have it on the watch list because finally I got Disney Plus. So. Okay. So when I get here, it's um, the same length, and I don't want to start having my stitches be this thick. Right, if I've decided to go this route. So what I'm going to do is just pull my thread down a little bit, still leaving a tail, okay? Because I don't want to have to re-thread my needle. But then that way, you can go even further before you have to tie off your thread. I'm sorry. I'm used to working much closer to my eyes. Actually, I might get just as far as I wanted to get. That's exciting. Okay, little tail. I'm not gonna stuff you, so we're just gonna go like this. You could also use your thread to sew hair. Or maybe you have a hairy animal. That's a great idea. Dangle for a little bit. Oh, I already lost what's my top. This is my top. I'm gonna go back up. My tail got stuck in there, so I need to pull down a little bit more. I'm gonna do Two or three more stitches for you guys. We're going to tie it off and then we're going to look at how we stuff our stuffed animal. So we're going to do one more. And remember, I'm leaving part of it open so that I can stuff my animal. Okay, so I gave myself a little bit more room this time. So remember, you go around that last stitch you did. You go under, Oops, I'm trying to, it's getting some of the felt in there. I'm going under that stitch. I am pulling my needle through, pulling tight. I'm going under 
the last stitch. There we go. And pulling it tight. I'm going to cut off the tail. Come in. So you have option one, which is thick. So I'm assembling. And then you have option two, which is skinnier. Totally up to you. The um, closer your stitches, the better your stuffing is going to stay inside your animal. Because look at the difference. If you've got really big stitches, you're going to see that stuffing coming out. So what I'm going to do is grab some of our puppies. And if you have anything left over, I'm sure we put this in a lot of crash kits. So I'm going to open up my elephant, Reginald. I'm going to stuff it. So then I'm going to get my fingers and I'm going to stuff and poke, 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 poke down there so we can get some into his legs. I chose to not put any in my elephant's tail. Your creature, your animal can be up to you. And you can stuff it. You could get like a pencil. My fingers aren't reaching and you could push it all the way into the trunk. Just depends on how you want your animal to look. So I would, if I was finishing this project with you on this video, cut out another piece of string, thread the eye of my needle. So just the way I was doing, just right there, I would finish my little elephant. I don't know how this got this way. I'm thinking this way. That's okay. I can go back and we can always restitch. But there we go. So that is how you would make your own stuffed animal. Like always, we have a thing about it. So this is an interesting one. So was your design easy to turn into an animal? Like when I got to the tail, I realized, I was like, hmm, this is really skinny. I don't think I'm really gonna be able to stuff it. So maybe you chose like an octopus and you found out that all of those legs were really difficult to make. So I would be interested to know in the comments below, was your design easy to make? Also, can you think of ways to make a fancier animal in the future. What about adding some bling or some feathers? If you made, um, what's the, uh, the elephant, Babar, and he's got like a little hat, I think, and maybe a shirt. So maybe you cut out some clothes in fabric and then you can sew the clothes on to your stuffed animal before you make your stuffed animal. How could you make your animal fancier? And then we always like to ask the question, what other materials could you use? So we could use fishing line, instead of thread, and then it would be clear um, as far as like going around. Um, if you sewed a button on for an eye, that's a different material. Um, the actual, you could make it out of a t-shirt. So maybe that's, um, you found a t-shirt with the poop emoji and you just cut out the poop, right? And you'd make your little stuffed animal out of that. Um, so we've got three questions for you to think about today. I will be back next week. We have another Makers Monday. Super excited. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow, 4.30, Facebook Live, Diwali celebration. I know I'm gonna be there. We're gonna have three kids left if you want to pick them up at the main library. They come with tea and activities. I don't know why you wouldn't wanna come and pick those up. If you don't wanna come into the library, that's awesome. We do have curbside service if you want to call 972-237-5700 <laughs> then we can bring it out to you guys thank you so much for joining me today and i will see you next week